follow your rules, right? Um, once you follow your rules and you have, you know, decent rules, you can actually come on top and make money, make that income. So don't worry about, you know, having a perfect market. Worry about, you know, things that you can control, right? So let's talk about what not to do, okay? What, and I don't know if you guys can see this, what not to do, and forgive me for my uh, sloppy handwriting, what not, actually, not to do when it comes to day trading, right? Let me see if this is showing up. All right, let me see if it's showing up right quick. All right, so what not to do? When it comes to day trading, you don't want to chase price. All right, so let's say price is going up, all right? You don't want to get in. Let's say you get in right here, right? You don't want to get in right there just because you think the market will continue to go up. You don't want to do that. Right? You want to get in because you know or you have a plan. All right? Don't get in because you have a feeling, a gut feeling. All right? that the market will continue to go up. This is why most people lose a lot of money and they give day trading a bad rap. It's because they coming in in the market and they try to guess and they lose all the mo all, all their money and, and they try to they blame it on the market, right? Let me let me tell you something real quick. The market will actually give a bad trader a winning streak. Right? So let's say that you're a bad trader, right? <laughs> you're a bad trader. And let's say that for a good week or two, you 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 know you you're doing real good. You're making a lot of money, right? See the market is very good at teasing you, making you feel like you know what you're doing. Then next thing you know. The strategies that you use to make a lot of money in those two weeks, they're not working no more, right? You're losing all your money now. Like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. That's because you are using a lot of bad strategies and you got away with it because the market is very good at teasing you. And making you feel like, oh man, I got it now. Guys, your job is not to, your job is actually to, um, your job is to make sure you are perfect when you're trading the market, right? The market itself may not do whatever you want it to do that day. But at least you are perfect that day. Okay, so if your rules tell you to get in at a certain spot, you get in. Okay, don't let the market um, control you. You control yourself and you follow your rules. That's how you become a good trader. Right? Because most traders, especially beginner traders, right, they... They uh, trading account look like this, right? In the beginning, and next thing you know, it drops. They keep on losing money, right? This is their trading account right here. Or sometimes they just break even. They don't go nowhere because these guys e either don't have a, a solid plan or they got lucky and, you know, now they losing all their money. So you have to... When, when it comes to trading, right, you become, you, you have to uh, be perfect. You can control yourself, right? You can control when to get in, when to get out. 
You can control following your rules. You can control that, right? That's what you want to master, controlling yourself. Because all that extra stuff, you can't control. You can't control if the market is going to have a strong trend today. You can't control if the market is going to range today. You can't control that, but you can control yourself, right? You can control your stop loss. And that's what you want to do. All right? There are people that come in the market to gamble, and there are people that treat this like a business and make consistent money. And you want to be that guy. You want that be that, you know, that person to make that, that's making consistent money. Even with casinos, all right, you, you you actually have people that know how to make consistent money when it comes to uh, casinos, right? Going to casinos, maybe they playing blackjack. You have you actually have people that actually could go in the casinos and make consistent money, right? Even though the casinos, uh, the people, the owners don't like that, but you know you do have that. You have people that go in a casino once in a once in a blue just to gamble and then you actually have people that know how to make money consistent money right you want to be that, that that person so how do you do that how you basically become consistent guys you have to know why are you getting in right where to buy Okay, you can't just buy just because price is going up. Where to exit? And I'm outside, guys, so if you hear anything, just because I'm outside, all right? Where to exit, guys? Where to exit? All right? Your stop loss. This is what you need. And like I said, my, my, my hand ranking is sloppy right now. Don't worry about that. Okay? You have to understand. If you don't have this, guys, you, you, you're basically gambling right now. If you don't know why you're buying, where to buy, where to exit, your stop loss. You don't, if you don't have none of that stuff, then you, you just give, give away your money to charity. Right? Because, guys, you have to understand. When you trade, right, you are competing Against the best, right? The best of the best, guys. You are competing against the best. When you're taking your capital and trying to trade the markets, you're competing with scientists, billionaires, millionaires, vets, math wizards, the smartest guys on the planet you are competing against. So if you are not, you know, coming in here with the right strategy and mindset, they're going to take your money. They're going to run over you. Okay? Now, a lot of people think that uh, the market is random, okay? Random. And it's not. It's not. What's random, guys, is profit distribution. That's what's random. And what do I mean by that? Okay. I mean, basically, let's say, um, let's say that you are having, let's say that you, you, the pattern that you're using is, is a triangle. Okay. And you, you know, you're waiting for a triangle break. So let's say that we have, let's say uh, you traded three triangle breaks. So let's, let's go. Number one, right? We have a triangle right here. And you're waiting for a triangle to break out. All right, number two, another triangle right here. Waiting for this triangle to break out, number three, okay? So all these is three separate trades, all right? Most people think the market is random, but it's not. Now, what's random is the distribution, right? How far the market will go when the price breaks that's what's random guys so one two three so basically how you 
create an edge in the market is you have to find a pattern that repeats itself over and over and over, right? That's number one. You have to find a pattern that repeats itself over and over if you want to if you want an edge, right? If you want to make consistent money, right? Now, most people think that, you know, since even if these patterns repeat themselves, uh, you know, you can still uh, have a losing day even if you see the patterns, uh, the patterns uh, you know, appear. What most people don't know is it's not the patterns. It's actually you don't know how far the market will go when it breaks. So we're talking about a triangle right now, okay? So, this is how you deal with it. Let's say that price breaks this triangle right here, right? And then it, it pulls back, stops you out, right? Let's say this one pulls, uh, breaks this triangle, goes goes up, right? A little bit more, but comes back and stops you out. And let's say the third trade, triangle comes, break out, right? And then it goes up crazy. What most people don't know is, first of all, this one, okay, was a loser, fine. But this one right here, this one number two can actually, this could have been a break even. You could have moved your stop loss up right here for a break even, all right? Or you could have maybe locked in a little bit profit right here. And number three, let's say that um, you had two losers on the first trade and the second trade. Now, the third trade, let's say that, you know, for the if you don't know how to read the market, let's say you took profits right here, right? Let's say you took profits right there. Yes, that is a losing strategy. Why? Because you had number one was a loser, number two was a loser, Okay. And number three, you only you it went up, but you only took a small amount. Yes, you are correct. That is a losing strategy. That's why most people think that the market is random and you can't make money from these patterns, right? They don't understand that trading is all about managing your trades. You are a manager, okay? When you trade, you are a manager. You are managing your trades. You have to know how to manage your trades. So if, let's go back to the examples. Number two, like I said before, let's say number one, we couldn't control this. So let's say that number one was a, a, a fake breakout and they stopped us out, right? Number two, like I said before, you could have put your stop loss to a break even. And this overall, you know, worst case scenario, break even. And that's it, right? Or depending on your strategy, you maybe could have uh, locked in some profits right here. Now, number three is where you make your money. Right? This is how you can make a losing strategy a winning strategy. You can, when you see the market, you know, going up like this, you can, uh, depending on your, the way you manage your trade, you can lock in your profits. So every time the market goes up, pulls back, you can move your stop loss right here. Goes up, pull back, move your stop loss. Goes up, pull back, move your stop loss until it stops you out, right? Now you have all this money right here. Let's say that that was four times your money. Remember, you only took one loss right here. And this was a break even trade. Four times your money right there. So you're up. That's a winning strategy. All because you know how to manage your trades. This is why you have to learn how to read the market and understand it. And you can't listen to other people that to, are not doing this full time. I see a lot of videos on on YouTube. Oh, day trading is risky. You can't make money from day trading. Yes, those are the guys that tried it, and they don't understand it. All right, this is why I put my videos out here, okay, and show you guys live trades of me making money. Um, so now. When you day trade, you have to figure out, do you want to become, right? Do you want to become a breakout trader 
or a pullback trader all right so do you want to become a breakout trader or a pullback trader that's number one you have to figure out if you if you if you day trading you have to figure out that um i used to be a breakout trader um but i don't you know use breakouts anymore when i trade i like pullbacks uh, you know, sometimes when you day trade, there could be a lot of fake breakouts. The reason why I like pullbacks too, because we could, you know, the risk reward is pretty good. So let's say that market is going back and we pulled back right here, right? And let's say I enter in somewhere around here. Okay. I have all this profit right here. Okay. Now let's say that you're a breakout trader and you're waiting for this top to break right you miss you missed out on all this move right here okay and you just basically looking for a, a quick break and you know sometimes it'll just come back so you have to figure out what trader you know you want to be like i said i'm a i'm a pullback trader right so if you're a pullback trader then you are looking okay you're looking for support and resistance right that's the name of the game the name in the game is support and resistance this is what I use when I day trade guys right you see me post my videos all I use is support and uh, resistance that's it nothing no fancy MACDs RSI's support and resistance <sighs> so your support and resistance could be a trend line right so the market is going up like this you have that trend line that, that could be one support and resistance another support and resistance could be when the market is ranging right horizontal support and resistance right and then uh, I like my head and shoulders right so you got the right left shoulder head you know and you use the left shoulder as resistance the same as an inverse head and shoulders right <laughs> Excuse my drawing. That I know that 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 doesn't that doesn't look good. <laughs> this drawing right here doesn't look good at all, guys. But anyway, you know what I <laughs> you know what I mean. You have the left shoulder right here. <laughs> you got the right shoulder right here, guys. All right. So you can use that as support and resistance. All right. So once you figure out, okay, I'm gonna be a pullback trader. You have to use support and resistance. Right now, just because price pulls to those levels, just because price goes to those levels, guys, doesn't mean you go you you, you get in you know you you uh you can get right in the trade, guys. So let's say for example the market is ranging right here. All right, and you see the market is, is at um support right here. Just because it's at support, you don't you don't uh. You just can't get in. You have to have a reason to get in, guys. A reason, right? That's the next thing. Uh, the next thing you you have to have is a setup. Okay. So number one, you have to figure out if you're going to be a breakout trader or a pullback trader. Um, like I said, I like being a pullback trader. Number two, if you're a pullback trader, you're looking for support and resistance. I just told you guys the support and resistance that you're looking for. And number three, you're going to look for setups around those support and resistance. Right. You'll look for uh, uh, so setups around that support and resistance. So let's say one of your setups is a double bottom, okay? So let's say that once, um, once, so let's say once price comes to this support right here, you're looking for a price to maybe make a double bottom, right? Whatever. And then you're looking to buy. Let's say that's that's one of your setups. Well, you have to wait until you see that double bottom. What if you don't see the double bottom? Well, you can't take the trade. That's why a lot of people can't uh, understand or, or make this happen because they either force trades, they mad that the market, you know, shot up and left them, and they didn't get in the trade. Oh well, that's part of trading, right? Um. Now, guys, let's say that you have a double bottom right here at support and resistance, right? You had a nice little double bottom, okay? Um, 
and you got in, right? Let's say you got in. Now, you need to manage your trade. Remember I told you guys, you are a manager. You are a manager, guys, when it comes to trading. You are managing your trades, right? So you get in. Let's say you get in right here. What do, what are you going to do? Well, you need a stop loss, right? You figure out where your stop loss is going to be. Well, I can tell you your stop loss. The way I look at it is if I have a double bottom, okay, and it and it and price breaks below this double bottom, guys. Guess what? That simply means if if price goes back to this double bottom, that simply means and break it. That simply means that uh, the pattern is really no good no more. The pattern is not good anymore because it didn't hold up. So why should I put my stop loss way below here? Okay, it doesn't make any sense. The market broke the structure. So since it broke the structure, that simply means it could actually continue to go down, right? So why do you want to stick around and stay in the trade, you know? So that's why, uh, you know, you have to have a stop loss. Um, you have to know when to put your stop loss, okay? Move your stop loss to break even. You have to know when, you know, the, you know when you back test, you're going to figure out on average how far um, your, your market moves, whatever market you're trading. So let's say on average your market moves – um on average let's say your market your market moves 7 ticks all right so every time the market goes up it moves 7 ticks okay on average on on average okay so guess what once it goes 7 ticks um and it comes back to your entry point you might as well just get out break even because it can go all the way back down and stop you out. And you do that by, by, uh, by back testing. All right. Like I said before, guys, if you have any questions, you can type in it. If not, you know, um, I'm going to keep on talking. Um, you have your stop loss in place. You have to know how much you're willing to risk on that trade. Okay. So whatever, you know, when, when you take that trade, you have to know how much you want to risk. And it, it, it better be, uh, you know, a decent amount, like a small amount. You, you can't just risk your whole account on one trade just because you feel like this trade is going to go to the moon. You can't do that, right? You need money to survive for the next trade and for the next day. Now, having all that stuff I just talked about, guys, all right? I talked about having a stop loss, having a setup, uh, having support and resistance, right? All that stuff I talk about, right? Um, is that going to make you win every single trade? No, of course not, right? But it's going to increase your odds. That's what it's going to do. It's going to make you feel uh, comfortable when you take a trade, right? You're going to feel much better because you're not guessing. You did your research. You know where to put your stop loss. You know when to get out break even. You know all that stuff. So now you feel comfortable when you're trading. Stop looking for the holy grail. When you, you know, you're looking for a, a system that's giving you 95% win rate. That, guys, this doesn't exist, right? 95% win rate. Come on. Not with day trading. Um, I showed you my stats, well, the, uh, the, my last video. I showed you that some days and some weeks... Guys, my winning my win rate is like around twenty seven percent or thirty percent, either for that day or for that week, and I'm still up for the week, still making money because 
one of my main keys to success is actually uh, I'm holding okay one of my main keys to success is actually holding and, and going for those bigger targets so if I have two losers right if I have two losers for the day let's say I have two losers it don't matter guys it don't matter because my next winner let's say that I'm down six hundred dollars right here Right? Let's say I'm down $600, right? And then let's say that my last trade I take, I could make, uh, let's say I make $1,600. Guess what? I'm up for the day. And that win rate is probably what? 30 something percent or something like that? One out of, uh, one out of three or something like that? That's, you know. So, <clears throat> your win rate doesn't have to be big, guys. Don't worry about that, all right? Do not worry about your win rate. It doesn't have to be big at all. Okay? Now, um, one thing I will tell you. I, I tell you one of my secrets. I tell you one of my secrets how, uh, one way how I actually make one of my uh, winners run. Okay? I tell you one of my secrets how I make... Uh, one of my winners, uh, you know, run. Um, this is one way. I have a, you know, another way of let you know knowing when. Okay, that's the key. Knowing when let your winners run. Uh, I'll give you one. Okay, uh, let's say that we are in the market, and the market is going up. So the market is going up. Uh, all right. Went up, right? And let's say that uh, I bought somewhere around here, right? So let's say it was a nice double bottom right here. I bought it. Now, let's say I'm in a trade and it, it didn't it didn't hit my target yet, right? And I'm noticing that the market is consolidating, right? And I'm still in a trade. While the market is consolidating, that usually means continuation. And not only continuation, it usually means it's gonna break out. Right? It's not gonna be a regular continuation, it's gonna be a breakout. And that breakout, uh, for the most part, can actually be a strong breakout, okay? Boom, breakout. I usually hold, when I see something like that, I usually hold a little bit longer because now this trade has a lot of juice behind it because we was consolidating for a long time. Now it broke, you know, broke out and is going up, and you know, buyers is, is pushing the market up. Okay, so that's one way, you know, uh, I know when to hold for a bigger target. Okay, I, like I said, I have another way. Um, so, guys, like I said, everything I just told you, right? You can have everything. You have you, you can have the perfect system. Uh, you can have everything, guys, and you can still mess it up. You can still mess up a perfect trading system just because you are not disciplined. Okay, so you can have it all, guys. You can have the best system, the best everything. If you're not disciplined, guys, you you shouldn't be trading at all, right? One thing I can tell you about discipline, guys, no one is pretty, nobody's really born with discipline, right? Yes, there might be others that adapt quicker, okay, maybe have more, you know, a little bit more discipline than others, but for the most part, we are not born with that, you know, that, that discipline muscle, so discipline is, is, is pretty much like a muscle, guys. If you want to build it up, guess what? You have to work on it every single day. So if you want to build up your discipline, you have to work on it every single day. It's not something that you can, uh, you know, think you can control it or, or you know, an overnight thing. You have to work on it every single day. And once you work on it, um, you know, things will get better. So um, uh, let me show you a quick example real quick. Okay, so today, this is a trade I took today. Uh, we was at support right here, guys. Look, we was at support. Um, 
and basically price as soon as it hit support shot up right made a higher low and I took this trade right here and I rolled this baby up nicely right this is when the news came out this is around 10 30 uh, news came out and this was a, a big winner I was I think I think, I think it was like a five five to one five X so uh, that's a good example of what I was talking about guys using support and resistance right